I want to show you how to restart your microworm cultures. If you get a little sick of the stink, which boy, a microworm culture when it goes back can really stink, I want to suggest to you mashed potatoes. This happens to be some I picked up at Walmart. You can use any store brand. What it is that you want is not flavored. You just want plain mashed potatoes. So the the disadvantage is, is that the microworms grow a little bit slower. The big advantage is, is that the culture lasts longer and when it goes bad, there's almost, there's very little odor. Yes, it, it has an odor, but nothing to compare with using baby cereal or oatmeal. This is just a very, very minor odor. Now, what you do is, the other question people constantly have is, you know, well, how thick is it? Well, make yourself some mashed potatoes. Maybe just, you know, a little bit runny, but just, you know, basically you're making mashed potatoes. So, I make them up in one, and then these are a little runny, going to be great. And then I divvy them up. Now, bear in mind the worms live on the top, on the very, very top of the of the potatoes and stuff. So making a you know three-inch culture of potatoes is just wastes a lot of potatoes. Worms are all right there on the top. So there's two. I keep both mic worms and banana worms. Uh, I don't really know why. But if you look at them under a microscope, there are all kinds of worms in there. Who knows how many kinds of worms you have. So, I mix up one batch, and that gives me four. Now, take your old stinky culture. Here is an old, well, I've, I've really let these go, but despite the mold growing or whatever, you can smell it. You know it's microworms, but it's not disgusting. And there are still plenty in here, so you want to just skim the top. So skimming on the top. And then you're ready to take this one outside and bleach it out and clean it. What I missed is, is that I do sprinkle 15-20 granules of a active dry yeast. It, it basically has an interesting The yeast eat the potatoes, and the microworms eat the yeast, so there's probably enough yeast in the little bit that I passed along to keep them going, but I always add some fresh yeast. Now we're going to open up one of the other culture. Boy, it looks about as bad as the first one. Then I do still see stuff in here scooting around. to get the yeast and everything on. Did the other two. And at this point now you just want to get them closed up. Put them in a root temperature out of direct sunlight. Take a little piece of 
of something and stick under there to keep the bugs out. Make sure it's got a little air hole. And that's it. In about four or five days, this I'll start being able to, to get some. And in a week and a half or so, they'll be crawling up the sides. Real easy to harvest. So that's all there is to it to get the new microworm cultures going, or banana worms, or Walter worms, or whatever variety you want to, you have. Uh, and you can keep these things going basically to like the end of time. Just keep doing that. I highly recommend using the instant potatoes. Thank you for watching. Here's what the banana worm culture looks like after a week. You can already see how far up the sides they've crawled. So you can just use your finger or a Q-tip or whatever to get all the worms you want while leaving the media in the bottom. Now let's go look and see how the, the regular microworms are doing. Here's the regular microworms. I've got two of those. You can see there's the media down at the bottom and you can see they've I've got a big numbers of them crawling up at least inch, inch and a half. So there's plenty of room to get enough food to feed hundreds of baby fish. And it's only been a week since I did the beginning of the video showing you how to move them over. And this stuff is still going just fine. So this microwave method works using instant potatoes. Uh, gives you a good culture. They crawl up the side. Uh, and you don't have all that horrendous smell. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.